Hello everybody, this is the Kaplan's Games and welcome to Dreadnought 101. Today we're going to cover how the tech tree works, the basics of the different kinds of ships and uh, just your basic stats on most of the ships. First off you've got again your three uh, factions, you've got Jupiter Arms, a Cooler Vector and Oberon. Oberon is where your more futuristic style ships as you can see right here for example your uh, Gravis. It re they're really, really, really slick designs, and I personally do. Re I love all the designs in the game. I really think all these ships are very, very awesomely designed. So, do take my opinion a little bit with a grain of salt, but these uh, ships are really sleek, and generally they are the more faster ones. You got a cool effector, which is generally just in the middle to the little bit to, uh, and a little bit to the heavy side from time to time with the uh, destroyers, the cruisers, and the corvettes in this case, and medium class with the other two. Uh, their design is more industrial style. So with this one, you can see it do everything does have more of like a function than the sleek designs. However, there is a little bit of like cosmetics on it, so. I do like that. And lastly, we've got the Jupiter Arms. They are extremely, extremely minimalistic. In the case, like for example, this one, it's just bare bones of what you need in terms of armor, and no real extra design features there. There is no small things, or with, if I can get my hanger going here, to see how minimalistic everything is done right here. Oh, that's Rurik actually, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Get a ballista, there we go. This is very, very industry, uh, industry like metal works. And it's very like corners and abstract uh, shapes. So that's also pretty cool. Anyway, we're gonna go for the basics. Here we got the, uh, I will call each of them in a specific name, which are which uh, go all the way back from the close beta, where you only had one of each of these ships, and they all had a specific name. In case of the heavy artillery cruiser, which is the Granada, on the Jupiter Arms, it has very high health, it has a very heavy sniper build, like very high hit, but low rate of fire. It has only a limited traverse on your gun, which is the downside, but and you also have very slow turning, but you get a very high damage output in return. Here we got a heavy dreadnought monarch, which trades its firepower for and move maneuver maneuverability for a very just giant health pool. Just ninety thousand on this one, well seventy thousand on the heaviest artillery cruiser possible. You can see that huge difference right there. The Avas is a medium class destroyer. Which uh, is just the all round destroyer, of course, so there's not really much said about it. The, uh, uh, in this case, it's the Valkor uh, Light Corvette, as a very high speed, uh, nimble uh, uh, hit and run class Corvette. It has an extremely high DPS here 4666.70. Six for example, for example, for the Monarch, only 1460, so you can see it's just four times the DPS. But the guns also have a very limited or simple similar to the Granada. Here we've got the Light Tech Recruiter, Kataro. It has a beam weapon that can only de da deal damage, but it does deal a lot of damage. It's a good uh, Corvette Hunter because of the beam weapon's uh, instant hit nature, so no bullet travel time or inaccuracy involved. And that does make it for an interesting support build against a gr group of Corvettes on the enemy side. Next up are the Agula Factor group. Here we got the Kreshnik uh, Heavy Corvette. It's a short range shotgun style Corvette. So if you're a fan of cross uh, shotgun bu uh, light builds in Crossout, you might really, really like this one. Its health is rather high for a Corvette. But in return, it's also for a Corvette a relatively slow. Uh, still, it will outer maneuver a lot of builds and you will run circles around a lot of them as well. But still, it's rather slow for a Corvette. So the other ones will get you and will catch you if you're gonna chase each other or whatever. 
Next up is the Frawrock Medium Artillery Cruiser. Also has limited traverse on the uh, gun. It's more maneuverable, so you can choose your own position faster and easier, but has a lower damage per second in return. Also sh shoots quite a bit faster than the uh, Granada, but it uh, deals again li uh, less damage. Z uh, Zemi, uh, medium dreadnought, is your all-round dreadnought. Not much to be said around about that. But it is a good all-round build. You can really go anywhere in terms of dreadnought loadouts with it. So that's why it is one of my favorite ones. Because I gave up on the Monarch, in my opinion, because of the extremely low DPS. So I'm going to stick to this ME for now. Next up is the Gora Heavy Destroyer. It's a mid of a hybrid build. You can. It's basically a light dreadnought with the modules of a destroyer. Uh, they both have the exact same uh, health pool, so in comparison to the uh, Invictus class uh, Dreadnought, so you do have an advantage in health, and you, uh, since it is a destroyer class, you have the, of course, the damage output modules. And uh, those damage output modules are really going to boost your firepower right there. Uh, next up is the uh, Corsair Heavy tactical cruiser which has a very high amount of uh, uh, healing output but it cannot damage anyone it has a high health output but has, uh, is very slow in return lastly are the Oberon ships here we got the Invictus as that the light dreadnought same health pool as the Gora but you get your dreadnought more uh, damage focused like in a different way like this is raw damage and that one is like damage boost and this one's also like health, so it actually, uh, you get the higher mobility uh, towards your uh, destroyer class, but you get the much higher survivability because of the health boosting modules the turtles also have. Next up is the Aeon Tactical Cruiser, which is the all-round tactical cruiser, which can both heal and damage, so it does have some each perk right there. It has medium speed, medium maneuverability, and just about as fast as the average medium destroyer. So you can get with you can get stick with your team rather easily with this one. Here we got the Nox artillery cruiser. It has 360 degree firing arc instead of the limited arc firing arc, so that's a bonus. But it has a rather low DPS in return. Your uh, health is also rather low, but it high speed enables it to be a uh, long-range harassing ship instead of a real sniper and you can stay uh, since you can fire like sideways you can stay on the move while firing while the other ones require you to stand pretty much still because you have to uh, uh, point your bow at the enemy next up is the Fulgora medium corvette all around corvette you can do pretty much anything in terms of build with it it has more range than the other corvettes so that's a bonus but you still have of course the corvettes have a water slow range in, uh, range in general next up are is the light destroyer uh, vindicta the vindicta is very high speed it all a uh, it can almost be used as a some kind of uh, corvette but a much much larger corvette at that it has again, again you can get your very high damage output with these ones in a different way than the assassination, so more like raw damage against more groups than single far, uh, burst damage in terms of the Corvettes. And I have to say, I really like all these ships. Range, and I'm gonna go uh, quickly cover the uh, premium ships right there as well. You can obtain them by buying them in the uh, uh, market. I myself got a P uh, PCF Celestia which it was obtainable by getting some, uh, with the uh, uh, gray box points which if you go to ships you can you could see it right here it was I think 300 or 700 uh, 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 gray box points you can obtain it by just uh, playing a few uh, doing a few of your missions so it's rather nice we got the trident at 4000 Sauron at 4,000 as well, the uh, Demeter at 4,000, and the Accord at 4,000. 
four thousand means you're gonna spend all that around thirty five to forty euros on such a ship. But they are they uh they uh, the loaders for the nice the com cosmetics are amazing. These are also the in the most cases are the only way to obtain these cosmetics. So that's a limit right there, but I do love these vehicles. Anyway, back to, uh, to the covering. So the PV, uh, PS, uh, PCF Celestia is a special version of Nox. You get these uh, pretty uh, amazing aesthetics on it. You get the paint job, you get the front of the bow, you get the uh, di uh, different uh, uh, cockpit or uh, I mean bridge section. So different these side panels right here and rear as well. Everything is entirely different. You can paint job and you get the loadout of uh, the train missile, disruptor pulse, armor amplifier, and rapid fire mode. Some of these are uh, modules that you cannot obtain in the tier two normal ship, so you can get like tier three or higher modules in a tier two match. So that's nice, but. They're not they're not really stronger. They actually have been nerfed compared to the normal tier three ones. Next up is the Accord. The Accord is based on the um, the uh, tactical cruiser, the Aeon. You get this entire aesthetic set, and as well as this paint job, and of course the ship. The ship is a tier four ship, so it's rather nice. You can play your veteran matches with it. You can see you got uh, you got no pattern, but you got the decal and the coating and the entire bow and the front section. So it's the ship itself, which is basically the tier four Aeon, but you have different looks and a specific loadout. I do not own this one, so I cannot look at the loadout. But it also uh, comes equipped with uh, officer briefings, and I'll talk more about them in a future episode. But I cannot cover them right now. Next up is Zaratan. Zaratan comes with the specific bow right here, and the entire, of course, loadout as well. They're all pre-equipped ships with their own uh, unit. If you buy this loadout right here, you can equip it on your vehicle, like I did it with my nav. I gave it this bow right here, which you can also see on my veteran fleet Morningstar. Right here, the same one. Different, different paint job here. You can see the PFC, and I can't lo load it out right this. Next up are the more is the Morning Star itself. You got the PF uh, PCF Morning Star and the full bl uh, flash Morning Star, which I got. The Morning Star is, I think, only the uh, now right now only obtainable with the maybe a, you can maybe get this one with a pack, but. Probably only obtainable with the original packs. I'm not sure if those do still sell. I will have to take a look at that. I'll put that down in the comments later if I find it out or not. And it comes equipped with the uh, Skeleton broadside, shot missiles, director beam, and warp jump. Basically, this combination is Skeleton broadside are basically shotgun broadside. Very little range, only 900. Shot missiles are high damage but low range missiles. Tractor beam, of course, like an auto tractor beam, you can suck in enemy ships. And warp jump allows you to warp to uh, both, in this case, both allies and enemies. It's so basically a very short range brawler build. You, for the officer breezings, which are, are like perks, I got a retaliator, uh, which reduces my cooldown on uh, shield taking damage when activating my shield. Survival Instinct, when my health is under 50%, I got a minus 50% reload time. So and Steady, which is uh, damage resistant plus 10%, but you go, uh, you get 10% slower speed. And Adrenaline Shan, if, you be, uh, if I'm healed, I gain energy, which is a really, really, really nice buff. And, well, I also got the Heavy Flectors, of course, which are also basically shotgun units. The PCF warning star, you can, you, I do not have the officer bruising, but it's the exact same loadout with the exact same modules. However, you do get this uh, flat frontal part instead of the bow section. Although you, 
you, and since you cannot uh, change the appearance, it's all locked, so you cannot do anything else with that. You can see the normal Morningstar for Castle, which you also get separately with the Morningstar. Well, in this one case, you got the uh, original Morningstar uh, front, so that's also a bonus. Next up is the meter. The meter is the, of course, the uh, uh, heavy Kreshnik Corvette. You got this front lapel and everything loaded out. Paint job does look pretty nice. However, I'm not sure if I would pay 40 bucks for this myself. In my opinion is for some of these I w would, but not for all of them. Uh, next up is the Trident. Trident is based on the Monarch. It has this extremely sweet Trident frontal bow and this amazing, amazing looks on this thing. I've even though I do not think the munch itself is worth it, I probably would get this one because it just looks so sweet. And there are also four more of them, which are based on the uh, on certain other ships. The first one is based on the Volgora Corvette. Uh, second one is based on the Goshe uh, Tactical Cruiser. Third one is on the uh, Gora Destroyer, and the fourth one is based on. Wait, got it. It's actually yeah, the fourth and the fifth one are the Morning Star and the Celestia, and those three are obtained were obtainable by one of the other battle packs, and they also you you would gain a basically you would get the P uh, you in this case you would get a PSC version maybe. On not all of them because so, uh, I'm not sure if that actually works that way because there are only tier three, tier four in the normal ones. But you get the premium version like I got for my premium Morning Star also, and you could have a entirely loaded out tier four group, which I'll would allow you to grind grind a lot of credits right off the bat, and without really having to grind your way up to tier 4 ships for the higher loadout. Although these ones, you cannot research anything with it. I just got the here, just got this 4000 research pool right here, which the only way I can get that into another ship is by using a uh, conversion unit, which requires your uh, premium currency right here. 277, 4080, so you get uh, conversion rate is 1 coin for 40 experience, so rather low, but it can, you can still accelerate your progress that way. Anyway, that concludes it on the basics of these ones. I will later go on in detail of every single one of these vehicles over time once I unlock them. I will probably start out with the Augusta, Rurix, Miguel, and the Cerberus as a group, and then start uh, as a group, and then go to like Orcas, Furia in the next episode, in another episode, Torga, Nath. And then Trafalgar Dover as a group, and then this one's a Dover groups, these ones as groups, this one's as groups once I unlock them. Although these less ones I'll probably do all of them separately because it's gonna take quite a while for me to unlock them. Again, I do not own any promotional accounts on any of the games I play, so I do have to get all of the content by myself by grinding. So if there's a uh, time between uh, me, uh, for example, covering the Onager and the Jetland, that's simply because I had to grind to get that Jetland. And, well, that's kind of a downside of being not really that popular yet on YouTube, I guess, because maybe other players uh, that are very uh, popular they would be able to cover it. So faster, because they would get a premium account or, or if premium currency or whatever. But I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you guys all later. It was a Cat Plays Games, and bye bye.